Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning into my talk. My name is Luke Ginger, and I am a water quality scientist at Heal the Bay. We are a nonprofit based in Southern California. And today I will be talking to you about the Beach Report Card and NowCast, specifically successes and challenges involved in public water quality notifications. So the mission of my uh, recreational water quality programs that I run is a uh, day at the beach should not make anyone sick. So what we're trying to do is equip beachgoers with water quality information so they can make decisions on where and when it's safe to go in the water. And we want folks to avoid situations where they're swimming after a rain event or in front of a storm drain, which you can see in this picture here. And uh, there are a few challenges involved in communicating uh, water quality information to the public. One, we need to make sure that the information we're getting out there is understandable and digestible for people. We need to make sure the information is up to date and relevant. And we need to make sure that folks are accessing that information. Uh, if we're putting this out there, we need to make sure people are using it before they head out to the beach. So uh, this is a list of challenges that we have addressed and um, hope to continue to improve upon. So in terms of uh, providing understandable information to the public, um, uh, we have our beach report card uh, program, which takes water quality information, which is traditionally uh, presented to the public in a format you see on the left. And this is typical of what you would see on an agency's website. It's a table with the beach name and bacteria concentrations and the beach status. So we take information like that and we do some, um, we, we have an equation that turns that information into a letter grade, which is much more intuitive for people. And each letter grade uh, is correlated with a, a smiley face to just drive the, the point home even more. So uh, we think that this is a much better way to present water quality information to the, the beachgoers. And this uh, information is provided on our website called beachreportcard.org. It's provided free of charge. In terms of providing up-to-date water quality information to the public, um, we, we have started doing predictive modeling through our NowCast program. So with the beach report card, there are some time lags involved in that. Number one, it takes time to um, collect monitoring samples. It takes time to uh, get that data um, up online. And then it takes us some time to uh, generate a grade. So there are some time lags there. And it would be great if we could have, you know, very up-to-date information getting out there to the public. So uh, we start doing predictive modeling where we look for correlations between environmental variables and bacteria concentrations. And we use those environmental conditions to predict what the water quality will be. And we provide these predictions alongside the grades on our website. So this is the beachreportcard.org. And we can, we can do now cast modeling at about 25 beaches in the summer. And we scale that back to about 10 in the winter months. And then finally, how do we make sure um, that folks are getting this information? Uh, well, we, we have our website, which I mentioned. We also have uh, apps, which are free of charge, available for iPhone and Android devices. Um, so folks have access to those things. Uh, we also conduct outreach events. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we would show up to uh, festivals, fairs, um, uh, speak with people one-on-one -on -one and educate them on these programs. Of course, we can't do that anymore. Um, and we also have educational events. So pre-pandemic, this would be us showing up to, you know, maybe a high school giving a talk. But uh, during the pandemic, that has turned into blog posts and webinars. So um, uh, COVID has definitely impacted uh, our ability to spread awareness about these programs, especially because we don't have a you know, budget to do uh, advertising or something like that. The second challenge involved in uh, communicating water quality information to the public are the technical hurdles involved in that. And a lot of them uh, 
are, are involved with data availability. So I mentioned um, upload time earlier. I mentioned the time lags in collecting uh, uh, beach water quality data. So, so those time lags kind of prevent us from, from uh, you know, up-to-date information sometimes. Data formatting is also an issue. So we get data from all sorts of different sources, online databases. Sometimes we get an Excel sheet emailed to us and um, it's in a different format and it takes time to get, get it into a usable um, format. And I wanna shout out the folks at Swim Guide who have made a universal data formatting guide and we, um, we recommend uh, looking that up and following it. Uh, in terms of Nowcast, uh, there are all sorts of variables that we might not have access to uh, because they're not updated enough um, or simply there is no data uh, for that variable. Uh, an example would be birds. We don't know how many birds are on the beach and, that, and those could be impacting uh, uh, the water quality. And then uh, equipment malfunctions are another hurdle. So uh, Nowcast in particular relies on um, uh, environmental monitoring equipment that's out there in the field and sometimes um, those go down. And also regulatory programs uh, pose a hurdle. So some data might be collected under a TMDL permit or an MS4 permit, and uh, that data might live in a place that we're not used to looking or, or we don't have access to. And then finally, the last technical hurdle is uh, our predictive modeling techniques. We can only uh, uh, get a predictive model for about 25 beaches in the summertime. And part of that is due to the statistical methods that we are implementing. So it takes time to research alternative methods and, and do some trial and error. So that's, that's definitely a hurdle for us. And the third challenge I'm going to talk to you uh, today about is you know, the future directions of our programs. So uh, of course, we are going to continue to work on those uh, first few challenges that I mentioned. Um, but we want to take things a few steps further and, and uh, you know, push the boundaries a bit. So uh, we've been getting into some freshwater monitoring and some water quality research, which I'll, I'll touch on. So uh, in the United States, many inland waterways, many lakes, rivers, and streams are not monitored for recreational water quality, which is unfortunate because many people do use these bodies of water uh, for recreation. So what Healed Bay does is we go out to a few locations in LA County and we collect samples and we provide that uh, data online. We also aggregate data from other monitoring agencies that are, are collecting uh, data at um, lakes, rivers, and streams throughout the rest of the county. And, and we have created a river report card now. And you can see the uh, website link is here. So I encourage you to check that out. And we are also um, trying to get some legislation passed in California. We are trying to get a bill passed called the AB 1066, which would require uh, freshwater recreational uh, water quality monitoring. In terms of research, one area we are looking at right now is the impact wildfire has on recreational water quality. Uh, most water quality research focuses on, on things other than bacteria. So, so we're looking at bacteria now. Um, here's some data I'm showing you. This is an analysis done by Anisha Bafna with uh, NASA JPL and University of Pennsylvania. And what these black squares are showing you is a little stretch of coastline. Uh, for Nicholas Beach, which was um, inside the burn area for this fire, and Topanga Beach, which was outside the burn area for the Woolsey fire. And this is showing ocean turbidity um, at, in this stretch of coastline leading up to the fire, which occurred in November, 2018. And you can see that the, uh, the, the big white uh, blot on this uh, square indicates that there's a high amount of ocean turbidity once the fire occurred. And Topanga Beach, which was not inside the burn area, you can see has much less uh, turbidity at that time. So we could see an, an impact of uh, wildfire there. And we can also see an impact of wildfire on the bacteria concentrations. So this is an analysis done by Marisol Sira with UCLA. And notice that the blue bars, uh, which show the bacteria concentrations after the fire, 
Uh, the blue bars are larger than the pink and the green ones, which show the, the average of bacteria concentrations before the fire. And I'll also point out this, uh, this big purple bar, which correlates to a, uh, a, uh, an anomalous rain event that happened in March 2020. Uh, which sent a, a high amount of bacteria into the ocean. So we, we, we're starting to see an impact of uh, wildfire on recreational water quality. So with that, I will thank you all for tuning in. And I encourage you to reach out to me through my email if you have any questions. Thank you.